Hello, I am Test Drive, and welcome to my newest Let's Play, which is going to be none other than the first Forza Motorsport game, because I have decided that I wanted to play through this game, finally, after, like, years of wanting to and not actually doing it. But, as you all probably maybe know, I've played through Forza 2 a while ago, and finished it up, like, two or three years ago, and haven't really played any other Forza games as Let's Plays since then, except for I tried to do Forza 6, but that didn't work out because... I ended up not liking the game that much. But we are here with a brand new profile on Forza Motorsport 1. And let's get started. In the career mode, of course. So we have to pick a home region. Home region determines the availability, starting cost, and rarity of the cars in your career. Home region does not affect which tracks are available. So interesting thing about this is that in this game, unlike Forza 2, you can unlock all the cars. I think... I think you can unlock all the cars um, without having to be in every different uh, area. Because in Forza 2, you can only... you Like, some cars were locked permanently if you pick, say, North America or if you just picked Europe. But you could change it. And I don't think you could change it in this game, so I think that you can get every car without, you know, losing any. So, I don't know what car I'm going to pick, honestly. I'll just run through them real quick. So we have ranging from the PT Cruiser, GT Turbo, Ford Focus SVT. Game got kind of confused there. Lexus i300, Acura RSX, and the Acura 3.2 CL, which is an interesting one to see. Because I don't think that was in... No, I, I can guarantee that was in no other Forza Motorsport games. You may have seen it in like Gran Turismo 4 or 5, but that's about it. And Eagle Talon. Check out Europe, which I think we have a Volkswagen Corrado. Yeah. Mini Cooper. Of course, the good old standby. 95 Volkswagen Corrado SLC VR6. A Saab 93 Vigan, which I always think is an interesting one. Audi TT. Coupe 3.2. Volkswagen R32. And a Peugeot 206 GTI 180. And then, of course, in Asia, we have all the... Fantastic Asian cars ranging from a Hyundai Tiburon, because Asia, not just Japan. Mazda 3, which is weird, the car. Honda Civic Type R. I love the starting cars in this game. The Alteza, which is, you know, the same thing as the fucking i300. This game has a lot of reproduction, or, uh, like, twin cars. Like, you have the, 240, uh, the S14 240SX and the S14 Silvia. You have the Alteza, and you have the IS-300, and some various other ones as well. And the Mitsubishi FTO is the last one on the Japanese list. So, I think that we're going to go with... Let me think about it for a second. So we're going to make it a little bit interesting and go with the Toyota Alteza RS-200, because I don't think I've ever actually picked this car as my first car in this game, ever. So, we have a bunch of colors we can pick from. Red looks pretty good. The blue looks pretty good, too. I figured you could like, zoom in and out. I thought there was a way to get rid of the menus. You could just look at the car. I need to do that. Not that. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to put blue on it. We're going to make it blue. And we're about to select the home ranger for this profile. It cannot be changed. There we go. Yes, I would like to buy the Toyota Alteza RS200 and make this my place. So here's our main career page. We have Go Race, we're going to go to Race, of course. The garage, where you can see all your cars, and as well as customize and buy upgrades for your cars. You can buy cars from here. This game has a decent amount of cars. It has 231, I believe. And a lot of interesting cars, as will hopefully show off throughout this Let's Play. And then you can dream a, train a drive avatar, which was the first game this ever, you know, drive a tar ever came or uh, was a thing in. But in this game, it's more of you race around some tracks, it learns from what you do, and then you can set it to, instead of uh, hiring an AI, you make your drive a tar do races. So that's interesting. And then we can set our difficulty, which I am going to do right now. Yeah, difficulty, I'm going to keep it medium because fuck hard. I don't really care enough to do it on hard. So, for now, let's go race. I'm not even going to worry about 
upgrade my car yet. You can change your career difficulty settings. Change your career da, 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 da. I just did that. Gives you these tips like every time you hit a new level. So all the way from level 0 to level 50. And here are the events list. You can do an online career, which you obviously can't do anymore because Xbox Live is no longer around. And it's not system link. So you can't really do that. You have point-to-point -point races, which I'm not going to worry about for now. And then the amateur series, and then the rest are locked for right now. So we're going to do the amateur series and start out with the Asian Open. And of course, it tells you how many cars you have that are eligible, and you can see what your opponents are going to be. Actually, what they are going to be. They don't uh, vary, unlike some games. And you can see the restrictions for the race series. So, as you can tell, I have a couple times on there. Arc 7 Spirit R, for whatever reason. I don't know why I use that, but whatever. And we have to Tsukuba Circuit. Maple Valley East 2, which is a short circuit. Maple Valley 1 is a long circuit. And the Forza 1 only Tokyo circuit in the dark. Which this game had night racing way before, you know, Forza 6 was the first one to have night racing since this game besides Horizon. But Horizon doesn't really matter. So, let's get started on Tsukuba circuit. And so here is your start race screen, which has pretty simple options. Start race, load your avatar, load a tuning setup, or you can quit, of course. And then you can enter the race. And random thing about this game is that if you hit the rev limiter on simulation damage, it will engine, it will damage your engine. It will engine your damage. Yes, that is correct, me. So I totally haven't tried this once and failed already. Totally not. Um, the uh, heads up display is pretty simple. You got your gauges on the right, which if oh I press wrong button. If you switch to bumper view, you can see the full gauges. Hello, Sylvia, S14, which are pretty nice. It's kind of like Forza 2. And of course you have like four total views. You have a lower bumper cam, a higher bumper cam, and then this camera, and then this camera, which I'm gonna use this closer uh, exterior camera because I like it the best. And then that's pretty simple, straightforward. You have your position, the track map, and your race information on the top right. I'm luckily in first. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good way to start the let's play. You know, being in first place, and hopefully not going off the track. Cough, cough. That's one of my favorite Forza games, though. I really, really enjoy this game. I think it's my second favorite behind Forza 4, if that tells you anything at all. I need a thumbnail photo. Uh, or do enough of something to get a thumbnail photo. I need it to be, the lighting needs to be correct. I can't really see anything when there's a shadow casting on the front of the car. Ah! I'll get down the straight here. All right, here we go, here we go. Okay, that was good enough for a thumbnail. I keep pressing this button, because you can see this game doesn't actually have telemetry like Forza 2 and up have. So you just have your damage and your tire heat right there on the right when you press the white button, or if you're on Xbox 360 like I am, the left bumper. And then I don't think there's really any other crazy controls. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Come on, get back on the track. Yeah, this game has a lot of cars and tracks I would like to see return to the series as well. I could care less about the uh, the rebadged cars like this and the IS300 or just putting this back in. I'm pretty sure the IS300 is in Forza 7, maybe. But other cars like uh, the Subaru Impreza 2.5 RS, Give me something other than just a 2-2-B to play with. That'd be kind of cool. And a few others, like I said, I'll show throughout the, the series that I really enjoy having and I wish could be back. But I'm not actually all too worried about it. It's just, you know, it'd be nice, you know? Very nice. I have to say, this game does not look bad graphically for being a game that's 12 years old now. It actually looks pretty decent. Alright, so I won. 
totally not, like I said, totally not the second attempt. Um, you can view the replay, save a replay, retry, or you can OK. And here you get your race winnings, which I got 5,400 credits because I have a difficulty bonus, car rarity bonus, which is an interesting one. There's all my difficulty stuff. Oh, I was like, why is that 0%? But it's because fuel and tire wear. And then you can see how much damage you got on various body parts and whatnot. And in this game, levels are determined by credits, how many credits you get in each race, instead of XP, like Forza 3 and on, I think. And we get level rewards, Toyo Tires, you have a special relationship with Toyo Tires, while your tires for all cars are 10% off in the upgrade shop, which I will show off probably at the end of this episode. Oh yeah, and then it gives me another tip. Use the brakes early and often. Forza Motorsport is a simulator. Don't you know this is a simulation game? As a result, it may take longer for you to... F longer than you to expect to break... A, uh, da, da. You can read it. Sometimes you have to drive slow to drive fast. There we go. There's something I can read. All right, on to our next race at Maple Valley Short. All right, on to our second race at Maple Valley Short, as I mentioned. Hopefully this one will go a little bit better than the first race. On the first attempt. Excuse me, Mr. Honda Accord. Excuse me. Also, yeah, the uh, AIs don't have names in this game. They didn't start that until Forza 2. They're just... The AI's names are Nissan Silvia S14 or Honda Accord Coupe or whatever. Ah! Come on, pass them Silvias. Ha 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 ha. Okay, I passed. I'm passed. Good. And this was the dawn of Maple Valley. Ooh. Fancy. Because this obviously was the first Forza game, so... This is obviously the first to have Maple Valley. And I'm pretty glad it's back in, you know, Forza 7. Even if it does look a little bit different and is... The pit lane is in a little, a little bit different spot. But those are not really big worries to me. It's still a fun track to race around. Has this nice big sweeper at the beginning. You know. Pretty simple, straightforward. Eh. I'm doing 3.8 seconds better than my best lap, which is the first lap. Do a nice little slide around there. I'm going to try to not use a single car twice in this entire Let's Play. I think I can do that pretty easily, but I really have no clue how it's going to go. I feel like, because there's, there's uh, one make races, I feel like I'm going to accidentally use a car not in one of the ma one, ma bleh, one make race races, um, like somewhere else in the career, and then get to that and then be like, oh, well, shit. And I'm not going to do this hardly in order at all, like, to how the career is. It's going to depend on what cars I have at what time. So it's not like I'm going to go straight from amateur to point to point to blah, blah, blah. I'm going to end up, you know, skipping around and doing it that way. Because it's a lot easier than trying to fucking do everything in order unless I have unlimited money. Which I could have, but I really don't feel like doing the cheat codes right now. Because, fun fact, if you... Uh, if you put in certain names, you can either have the game on level 50, everything unlocked, but start with normal amount of credits, or you can have a profile with 900 million credits that starts you out as per normal. So, we got 5413. Why is my difficulty bonus 2399? Wait, wasn't it 5414 before? No, it wasn't, I guess. Okay. So we've reached level two. We got a relationship with Brembo. Modify brake upgrades for all cars at 10%. Ah, 10% off in the upgrade shop. Cool. All right, we're in some reverse with the X button, but I don't have automatic on, so that doesn't help me at all. I'll let you read this, and we'll continue on to our final race, which is at Tokyo. How am I doing? Leaderboards wise, not not that great compared to my other ones, but you know. I also have a completely stock IS300. Alright, we are here on our final race to Tokyo. 
Every car is the same, of course. And we're going to be doing some night racing because hell yeah, night racing. I love how the Super 2.5 RS is so fast to accelerate, but then it's like so slow. Because it's literally just a base model. Oh, you fucking idiot. I'm restarting. I don't care. Fuck that. Fucking Sylvia. Breaking where you don't need to break at all. Like, seriously, you just don't need to right there. Now, can I pass him? No. You dingus. This didn't damage anything other than... Apparently my side skirts. I'm not sure I damaged those, but I sure shit did. And I broke his brake light. Well, you don't really brake lights in this game. It's more of you just damage cars and then they slowly, like... Fucking get out of the way! You don't really, uh... Like, the whole entire light doesn't go out at once. It's more of... Wherever you damaged the car, that's where the light goes out. Like, half of a light can be out. It's weird. And my my bumper has uh, all kinds of scratches and shit on it. Another random thing about this game that wasn't in any other Forza game, as far as I know. Maybe it was in Forza, like, 5 and 6 and up. Um, but if you run into a wall, you will leave a scrape or a... Like, you'll leave paint. Here, I'll try and do it right here. Might be able to see that in the second lap. But you'll leave paint from the car on the wall. Which I always thought was fucking cool. Okay, time for this pain in the ass. Also, um, PGR4. I let's played that game. If you watch that Let's Play, I noted in some of the episodes I went to Tokyo. I guess. Was it I guess it was Tokyo. Um I went to Tokyo to race in that game, how some parts of this track are the same as some parts of the tracks in PGR4. Specifically, the intro part, or the uh, the first straightaway that you start on in this race, or in this game. So that's pretty cool. I'll try and note it whenever uh, we go past places that I recognize from PGR4, or vice versa, I guess. Oh, I over-revved. Damn it. Okay, I hit the rev limiter. So this part right here, I'm pretty sure... Or, actually, no, it's it's the part uh, after this little chicane up here. Past the lap marker. See where the Epson building is? That's in PGR4, the Epson building. So, this part right here is in PGR4. And it's fucking cool. I went way too far. Screw off, Sylvia. Go away. Eh. <laughs> I find it weird still that they put night racing in this game, but couldn't put it in like Forza 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't know why. I don't know if it was because of the uh, light physics were too hard to figure out or fucking... I don't know. Well shit, like even Forza 5, you had playground games that had made Forza Horizon 1 that had light physics. <laughs> you know, night racing. And it was actually really good night racing too. I have no clue of why... They couldn't just be like, hey, can we borrow that, please? Pretty please. Oh no, I went way too fast up here. Son of a bitch. I'm not going to win. So anyways, I'll see you guys back here after I restart. I'll see you in that exact spot. Because I don't feel like saying everything over again. Alright, I didn't make a mistake this time. Luckily, well, I did make a mistake, but it wasn't as bad of a mistake as the first attempt. So, I think we have it this time. As long as I don't fuck everything up. So yeah, I'm definitely pretty excited to be Let's Playing this game, finally. Glad to share it. And the good news is, is that race is going to be fairly easy from here on out because I'll be like upgrading cars and crap. So we'll give them a few seconds to finish, maybe. 
I didn't really think about doing that before, but whatever. Alright, I don't feel like waiting anymore. They've, they've taken their time. I did run into a wall once, which cost me a few, few hundred credits in uh, repairs, sadly. But, no matter what, we have reached level 3. I'm probably going to have around 17,666 credits. So that's pretty fucking cool. And we've established a relationship with Ingen. Modified intake and exhaust upgrades for Asian cars are 10% off in the upgrade shop. Cool. So we got a prize car, 2001 Acura Integra Type R, which is funny enough going to come in use for the uh, American Open or front wheel drive or something. I'm not really sure of uh, which one I'm going to use it for yet. But we have that now. And we can buy upgrades to improve performance, of course, which I will be doing as of probably the next episode. Or actually, probably this episode. I'll show I'll always show it off, because this car has a lot of upgrade options. So, we'll go to the garage. Buy upgrades. So, of course, we have the engine and power. Which some cars can't have certain upgrades, like uh, supercharges and stuff. And then only a few select cars can have uh, engine upgrades. Which is funny, in this game... I don't... I think it's this game doesn't change the drivetrain, but the, on Forza 2, it actually changes the drivetrain along with the engine, so, like, if you put an all-wheel drive and or car with an all-wheel drive engine in there, it makes the car all-wheel drive. Random note. Um, but you can put a 2JZ in this car, which does make sense, I guess. And 3UZ, huh, you can put the SC430's engine in this car, that's kind of interesting. And then the 2JZ GE, from the i300 which apparently just gives it five extra horsepower um i don't know what engine actually this car has in it but whatever so then you can do you know engine tuning which is the biggest uh upgrade besides turbo which obviously adds a lot of horsepower and then aerodynamics one reason the reason i want to show this car is because it has a lot of aerodynamics you can change the wheels on any car i'm pretty sure um you have these set select wheels with uh select or their set colors there's a lot of interesting stuff you can tint the windows which is pretty cool all right there's a way you can like keep the window tint on there for the menus at least and then there's of course body kits but the coolest thing in this game that the rest of the well i think forza 2 might have this but you have forza motorsport rear bumpers instead of just having the front bumpers and the spoilers and it has like a little exhaust and it has diffusers and it's cool and then those hoods, and then of course the Forza spoilers, along with any other kind of spoilers you want. The roll cage, and you have upgradable brake lights. You can change the brake lights in this game, which is always strange, because you can't do that in any Forza on there, bleh, any other Forza game. But it's only in a very, very, very few select cars, like the PT Cruiser in this car, and I can't remember the rest. But Besides the fact that we have suspension, and also the uh, suspension upgrades don't show the car lowering, but they do actually lower the car in the menu. And then, simple enough, as well as stock, you, if you change the tires, it will actually change the size of the wheels and the tires. Like, it goes to 255s in the back. And the most extreme, uh, well, there's a couple of extreme cases of this. One is the Mazda RX-7, which it gives it tiny little tires and really wide wheels. But the wheels are the same size, but it changes, or it makes the tires lower profile. And the Buick GNX gives it like a drag tire setup. So, definitely interesting. But that is pretty much the upgrade shop. I'm sure I'll be using it sometime in the near future. But anyways, for now, thank you all so much for watching. And I'm out of here. See ya.